The process of ministerial appointment has been concluded. 36 ministers now form the president's cabinet. So to be the ministry shrouded in corruption. The Ministry of Petroleum is now headed by the president himself. The group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mr. Ibe Kajuku, is now the Minister of State for Petroleum. Will the president curb the so much talked about corruption in the state oil corporation? What does this mean to the stakeholders? Will the oil theft plagued in Nigeria finally be a thing of the past? Data feet still coming through. In one place, simultaneously, we'll focus on a few of them. The leadership of the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has admitted that it made a mistake in not allowing proper contest during the primaries that produced the former president, Goodluck Jonathan. The party said more than that. It apologized to Nigerians for its mistakes during the 16 years it presided over governance in Nigeria. Is the immediate past PDP regime speaking for itself? Do they have the right to speak on behalf of their predecessors from way back in 1999? It also condemned what it called the selective anti-corruption war on the present administration and alleged witch hunt of its members interact with us on our social media platforms. The wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, reminds the APC of their promise to pay 5,000 naira to 25 million unemployed Nigerians, asking the party to fulfill its promise of giving school children one free meal a day. The Senate voted against a motion calling on the government to commence the payment of the 5,000 naira allowance. Could this have a campaign strategy? Could this have been a campaign strategy to get the people's mandates by the APC? What if they fail on this very promise to the people? Will the APC be then taken seriously? Data feed still coming through. Barely one month of the governorship elections in Bayelsa State, aspirants from various political parties have converged to sign a peace accord to ensure peaceful and credible elections. The signing of the peace pact initiated by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in collaboration with the United Nations. Will they succeed in the task of delivering a free and accredited and acceptable elections that hopefully won't see another round of tribunal judgment? And talking about election tribunals, the People's Democratic Party, the PDP, has faulted the judgment of the Taraba State Tribunal, which sacked the state governor there, saying that the work of the tribunal was marred by political interference from security officials. Uche Secondos, as the acting chairman, calls the judgment a conspiracy to take over all PDP states. What a twist. Aisha Hassan is declared the duly elected governor by the tribunal. What are your thoughts? Treated Gimba 003. Now the House of Representatives has inaugurated its 96th standing committee in a special session with the speaker saying there is nothing like juicy or non-juicy committees in the House as insinuated in some quarters. Honorable Dogara said that the committees were inaugurated together to save costs and ensure they hit the ground running. Some members of the Progressives Congress, APC, in the House of Representatives loyal to the majority leader Femi Badabi Amila walked out of the party's caucus meeting on Tuesday. The action brought another angle to the crisis over the composition of the committee chairman in the state, as the lawmakers allege that there was a plot to remove Mr. Badabi Amila from his position as leader. Where is this coming from? Where is it headed? One of the lawmakers that left the meeting on Tuesday, Honorable Ahmed Keita, said that the Speaker, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, had gone against the wishes of the party in the appointments. Could this be true? What does this mean to the APC? The Supreme Court has suspended proceedings at the Code of Conduct Tribunal, the CCT, pending the conclusion of the appeal filed by the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, at the Apex Court. The prosecutor earlier told the Supreme Court that he will sign an undertaking, reaffirming him from doing anything in the tribunal pending the determination of the suit. The prosecutor said this while urging the court not to grant a stay of proceedings. He also asked for accelerated hearing as not doing so will give room for an accused person to continue to delay his trial. The back passing between the former National Security Advisor and the Department of State Services, the DSS, continues with Colonel Dasuki, dragging the DSS to court to protest his continued detention. He's asking the court for a mandatory order directing the DSS to remove all human and non-human barricades laid around his residence, which he says has hindered the accomplishment of the order of the courts, which gave him permission to travel abroad 
for medical attention? Will he bow to pressure? Is the DSS going against the law? What if the worst happens to the former NSA in his alleged ill health? What then? The acting chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, Ibrahim Magu, takes over from Ibrahim Lamarde. He is being investigated on treasonable charges. The new boss has asked all staff of the commission to brace up for fresh and greater challenges in the task of combating corruption. What difference will he make? Will he arrest corrupt officials without fear? What if he comes under pressure? Will he give in? It's prime time in Lagos. This is State of the Nation. This is State of the Nation. I am Gimba Umar. Data feed still coming through on all our social media platforms. ChannelsTV.com, YouTube.com, forward slash ChannelsWeb. The die is cast and the cabinet set to continue on the gains of the Buhari administration. The expectations from Nigerians is indeed high, especially with the portfolio of former governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashola, who is the Minister for Power, Works and Housing. In my interview with Professor Dakbo Afolabi, the former head of service in the Jonathan administration, he gave me his views on a number of probing issues as regards the ministers and their portfolios and how they will handle it. For him, Nigeria may just be on the way to getting back on track and surmounting its challenges. Take a listen. Professor Dakbo Afolabi, I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on State of the Nation. Let's begin by looking at the portfolios assigned to the ministers. What do you make of it? Well, the, I just came across the list. Of course, there are many things that are, will be under uh, consideration before the assignment of those portfolios. I trust the judgment of uh, the president and his team, uh, but I want to say this in a general sense. Uh, the team is really made up of people with a lot of experience. And um, they have uh, excellent qualifications. Uh, in terms of their capacity or the appropriateness or suitability uh, to the offices to which uh, they are allocated, I would say, yeah, potentially they, they, it looks good. But again, um, we have to taste the pudding. Do you suppose that this team is the team needed to? advance the cause of Mr. President's fight against corruption? Yes, I do. They are quite experienced people. But let the public assist them to change the system. Let's zero down on specifics. The former governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashala, is given the Minister for Power, Works and Housing. Is this one portfolio too heavy? What do you make of it? It's an exciting combination, but I can see uh, the logic behind it. When you have power, you have a uh, works and housing. It's putting the infrastructure uh, program together and build synergy through it. Um, of course, um, Fasholad handled Lagos State, and we felt its impact. Is this experience I'm sure uh, this regime wants to tap into. In terms of capacity, it's not the individual really that uh, you consider for capacity. It's his ability to use the resources around him and nest it and uh, perform. What do you expect to see though, considering that a lot of Nigerians believe that power is indeed the mainstay that can advance the cause of this country? Power doesn't have to remain the hand of government. Just be a regulator. And so it means it's the private sector that will deliver power. The various models that we have now, where you have the Genkos, you have the uh, Discos, and the Transcos, that seems to be still largely in the hand of government could be maybe one of the bottlenecks that we have now. Because as we speak, we have more power than we can transmit and perhaps distribute. So we need to free the three segments of power um, benefit. 
and place it in the hand of the, of the private sector and allow government to regulate very well and also more or less uh, kick it so that it can uh, uh, serve the people. That means whoever is in power really doesn't have to roll up his sleeve and be the one doing it. So, so what do you expect to see? What I expect to see um, in the very uh, short term is that the policy that will come will place um, the power generation, power distribution, power transmission in the hand of the private sector under very strong oversight of the Ministry of Power. Let's talk about the civil service. 17 of the permanent secretaries were sacked by Mr. President Muhammad Buhari. Does this in any way affect how the ministries should be running? Well, um, it's a big shock. Um, but again, um, depending on the, any administration and its program and its priorities, you must have confidence, you must have faith in the engine that is going to deliver your, your program. Um, this action is not new. Uh, when Neil came on board in 1999, the first thing he did was to assess his permanent secretaries. And within a period of one month, they were gone, more than 60% gone. Of course, in his own time, he took them through a reorientation uh, and then took an exam. So those who failed were dropped. In this case, I think they must have used other measures that uh, we cannot uh, uh, really uh, more or less evidence. But those measures must have been known to the authorities. And if that kind of um, shock therapy is required, so be it. There really isn't any, ch any change, considering when you say that uh, uh, there's a mentorship program of succession. So there really isn't anything that has changed. It doesn't really perturb the system. Um, again, a permanent secretary is uh, uh, primus inter pares, uh, just first among equals. Uh, in his absence, somebody acts, and that way we have trained many layers of those who could really take over. What I will not like is for you to bring in someone who has no experience of what public service is to be permanent secretaries. Let me just quickly pick it from where you stopped there, talking about the merger of the ministries. Has anything changed along that line? The way it has turned out is not too massive. I think you reduced from like 27 to 24 ministries. That clearly is not a major uh, rattling of the system. Uh, but I'll say to you that um, my fear really had been that large ministries were going to be collapsed and that would have been very disastrous. But as it is now, um, those things that are quite complementary are the things we brought together. Let's talk about the promises of the APC. During their campaign, they did promise that they will help, or should I say, give to unemployed Nigerians, 25 million Nigerians, 5,000 Naira on a monthly basis. That will amount to about 1.5 trillion Naira on a monthly basis. Is this sustainable? Is this a good idea? Well, one thing that is missing in Nigeria is we really don't have a social safety net. Any government, in whichever form, provides a social safety net, is my government. Because after all, what is government all about? It's about people. And when there is the will, it is doable. When a government decides to make that its priority, you will find a way, will create the resources and how to channel it. So it's really doable. What is just bad about Nigeria is poor statistics. How do you know who will qualify? Are you sure they won't be cheating somewhere along the line? But it's good intention, it's a good uh, point to start.
How well do you think this will go down with the senators who kicked this suggestion out? My experience over the years is that if you are determined as the executive and you want to implement a program, it's good for you to continue to dialogue, continue to expose the logic. I'm sure over time there could be some reasoning between the executive and the legislators and there could be a midpoint meeting point somewhere. It's something doable. Did you suggest it to the former president? No. I... So what will be your final words when it comes to the ministers, their portfolios, as against the expectations from Nigerians? Well, for me, um, I think that uh, we have a team with a lot of potential. What they need to realize is the office demands a lot of the skill to manage our resources for the benefit of the people. Anything outside that kind of philosophy or principle or determination, they should diminish. And ministers, I would like to also advise that they belong to Nigeria now, not to any party, not to any particular group or any ethnic group. They should see Nigeria, no matter the temptation, as their total constituency. With that, there will be less of complaints and of marginalization. It's not my turn. It's my person is not there. They should, for example, every office of the minister should be in the United Nations of Nigeria. Professor Dapa Folabi, former head of service, want to thank you so much indeed for coming on State of the Nation. Thank you very much. <laughs>